Today, Russia, the Tsar's Curious Runaways by Robin Scott Elliott and how to make Russian dolls. In today's video, we're looking at Russia. Russia is the biggest country in the world. It borders 16 sovereign nations and has 11 time zones incorporated within it. That's how big it is. It's over 17 million kilometers squared. Russia is so big that it occupies one tenth of all the land on Earth. So here's a quick fact file about Russia. The capital of Russia is called Moscow and the currency they use is called the ruble. There are about 120 different ethnic groups and they speak over 100 different languages. But 80% of Russians can trace their roots back to the Slavs who entered the country 1,500 years ago. 77% of Russia is made up by Siberia. It's crossed by the world famous Trans-Siberian Railway Line. And in fact, it's the longest in the world. And the railway line is 9,289 kilometres long and it's got branches that connect to Mongolia and China, which means you can basically take a train from Moscow all the way to Beijing in China. And one of Russia's most famous animals is, of course, the Siberian tiger. Though Russia is ruled by presidents now, it used to be ruled by czars for many, many years. You may have heard of some of the czars of Russia, the most famous ones standing out being Ivan the Terrible, Peter the Great and Tsar Nicholas II. Ivan the Terrible mounted some unsuccessful wars against countries like Sweden and Poland and he also had a reign of terror imposed against hereditary nobility. Um, he wanted more military discipline and he even is said to have murdered his own son and heir. Peter the Great, unlike Ivan the Terrible, mounted a number of successful wars which enabled the Russian Empire to expand and he also uh, brought about a period of cultural change. In fact, he laid the foundations for many of the Russian institutions that still exist today. He also brought about the Russian Navy and he was responsible for St. Petersburg, which was the old capital up until 1917. Moscow is, of course, the new capital. Peter the Great was one of the czars of the Romanov dynasty. They were in power as the monarchy from 1613 to the last Tsar, Tsar Nicholas II. During Tsar Nicholas's reign, Russia went from being one of the foremost great powers of the world to social, military and economic collapse. He was seen by Soviet historians as a weak and incompetent leader. During the early 1900s, there was much civil and political unrest. Strikes and unhappiness led to unarmed protesters delivering a petition to Tsar Nicholas at the Winter Palace. But unfortunately, the Imperial Guard were instructed to to shoot at them in events now known as Bloody Sunday. Eventually, Russian Revolution did occur and the Tsar and his family were overthrown and they had to go into exile. They were killed by Bolsheviks the next year in July of 1918. This led to the collapse of the monarchy and Russia then became the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union existed from 1922 to 1991 and the governing party was a communist one. Mikhail Gorbachev was the last of the leaders of the Soviet Union and he paved the way for what was to come next. He had ideas of glasnost and perestroika which were more open governance and more transparent ways of ruling the country. There was a move away from communism to social democracy, which paved the way for the Soviet Union to return to Russia, which it is still today. Today's story is set in St. Petersburg at the Winter Palace. The Tsar is dead and his personal ballerina, Kat, must now flee. The Kat Tsar's Curious Runaways by Robin Scott Elliot. Chapter 1 Katinka Dashkova wanted to live, so she held her breath. She had no choice. If she was to survive, she must be quiet as a stone, as still as the statues decorating the great rooms of the Winter Palace, one ripple of the curtain behind which she crouched, and he would find her. 
She was trapped in a deadly game of hide and seek. The urge to open a finger sized gap in the heavy red curtain and risk a peek out into the Tsar's private dining room tingled along her arms, heading for her fingers. She wanted to see, to see when he came into the room, to see if he really was holding a knife. The game had begun on the top floor of the palace. Katinka, or Kat, to her handful of friends, had just stepped out of the stairway that led from her sleeping quarters in the attic. The man yelled when he saw her, Death to the Tsar's circus! Kat decided that was all she needed to hear and took flight. It always surprised people how light she was on her feet. She was used to the way people looked at her and didn't see her. Why couldn't they see her dancing feet, her blue eyes, her shiny hair, her smile as wide as the river Never that flows past the palace and divides St Petersburg? In their twisted minds, she was a freak because she belonged to the Tsar's collection of people who were different. To her friends, she was Cat. To everyone else, she was a person without a name. Everyone but the Tsar, Peter the Great, the all-powerful ruler of Russia, the keeper of life and bringer of death. He called her Katinka and liked to watch her dance usually here in this room, and once in front of the entire court. But Peter was dead. Greatness does not make you immortal. And the Empress, the Tsarina, wanted rid of people like her. Kat twisted her head so she could snatch a look at her pursuer, the man who wanted to kill her. Her glance revealed he was red-faced, short, fat and round. It was like being chased by a dangerous dumpling. Where to go? Where to run? If only she could clear her head. She was blessed with a memory that required only a single look at something to store it in her mind. But that was in normal times. It was, she was discovering, rather more difficult to think straight running for your life. In normal circumstances, she knew the palace, every nook and cranny. One night, when she had given up chasing sleep around her head, she tried to draw a map of every room because Kat liked to be precise about things but torn came before she finished. She dashed down the stairs and into the shadowy courtyard. She saw no one, and if she shouted, no one would come to help. Who would dare defy the wishes of the Tsarina? Want them all gone. Get rid of them, the Tsarina had declared. Remove them from every nook and cranny they've crawled into in my palace. The noblemen of the court turned it into a game. They liked to live in a world where people's lives meant nothing, so they decided to hunt down the living members of Peter the Great's Kunst Camera, his circus of curiosities. Officially, they were to be rounded up and sent to Tsarevna Praskovia Ivanova, Peter's niece, daughter of Ivan V, a shy woman who'd always found it difficult to make up her mind on anything and now looked after the dead Tsar's human collection. She, as much anybody did, cared for them. But if any of the curiosities suffered an accident during the roundup, then these things can't be helped. That's what the not-so-noble nobles decided, and the Tsarina turned a blind eye because she had an empire to rule and a throne to protect. After all, accidents, as everyone knows, do happen. On the other side of the courtyard, the door to the Tsar's quarters was open and not stopping or caring how unusual that was, she darted in, raced through to the dining room and tried to make herself invisible behind the curtain. Aha! Witch, I have you! The curtain was ripped back and there he was. And yes, he did have a knife. Kat stared at it. The man raised the knife, but he was out of breath. Dumplings aren't designed to run. Kat seized her chance and dived between his legs. She threw herself into the curtains, disguising the far door. Peter, it said, preferred rooms to have at least two doors, so there was always another way out. Scrambled for the handle and plunged into near darkness of the neighbouring room. She lost her footing and skidded across the smooth wooden floor. She scrambled on all fours towards the far wall. The dumpling leapt in front of her. The knife glinted in the candlelight as he raised it once more. A shadow flickered across the candle mounted on the wall by the door. Oof! said the dumpling. Cat looked round in time to see him stagger against the wall and slide to the floor. His knife clattered to the ground. He finished in a sitting position, head lolling forward, tongue hanging out the corner of his mouth, his many chins disappearing into his chest and large belly. She noticed how little his legs were. They looked too small to carry such a weight. Cat let her breath out in a great sigh. She looked into the dark alcove to one side of the door, a space usually occupied by one of Peter's bodyguards. Have you killed him? There'll be all sorts of trouble if you have. He'll live. The voice was that of a boy, a teenage boy. But the figure who stepped forward into the half-light was that of a man, and a man about the height of Peter the Great himself. Oh, Alexei, I'm sorry. Thank you. 
Kat sprung to her feet and hugged him as best she could. They were the same age, 14 at their last birthday, but Alexi towered head, shoulders and chest above her. Saw him go after you, followed, said Alexi. He st stopped talking as if that was all the explaining he needed to do. He was a boy of few words, using them carefully as though scared they might run out and he'd be left with nothing to say. Strictly speaking, Alexi wasn't part of the cunt's camera. He was being trained as the Tsar's bodyguard. Peter the Great liked his bodyguards to be giants. Alexi's father was seven feet two inches in his socks and Alexi was heading the same way. Alexi's problem was the same as Kat's. The Tsar was gone. And with the death of, to give him his full title, the most excellent and great sovereign, Prince Peter Alexevich, ruler of Russia, Tsar of Kazan, Tsar of Astrakhan, Tsar of Siberia, sovereign of Pskov, great prince of Smolensk, Tversk, Yugorsk, Permsky, Vietsky, Bulgarsky, sovereign of the northern lands, the Averian lands, ruler of Georgian kings, of the Circassian and mountain princes. With his death, so it seemed, went their futures. Alexei glanced through to the dining room. He shrugged. The dumpling groaned. Come, said Alexei. Where? wondered Kat. Alexei shrugged again. He had run out of words. Hooray for Alexei saving Kat in the nick of time. We're staying on the theme of Russia now and it's time to get ready to get making. So today I thought it might be fun to have a go at making some Russian dolls, which are those traditional little wooden dolls that you get that decrease in size and you often open them up and then find another smaller one inside and then you keep going and they all look identical um, and they're Russian peasant girls usually. Um, so to make this to kick off what you need to do is find lots and lots of old containers cartons so I've got a selection here to show you so for instance a yogurt pot then you need to find something a bit smaller that will fit underneath. So I've got a polystyrene cup here. Then you need to find something smaller that will fit underneath. So I've got uh, another yogurt pot here. And then you need to keep decreasing in size uh, until you get to your smallest thing. And that doesn't need to open up because you're not going to have anything else in there. But you can keep going as small as you want, as long as everything is decreasing in size there we go and some of the yogurt pots might have an edge like that but it's okay because you can cut them off if you don't have a yogurt pot you could just find other things like for instance the uh little section an egg comes in is good if you can cut that off an egg box or you might use an old bottle lid from a lotion bottle or you could use anything that fits the bill, like this is a polystyrene cup, of course. Um, and next up, we need to transform these so that they look like Russian dolls. Before we get uh, decorating our Russian dolls, I should point out that there's two types you can make. You can make the type that uh, stack like this, that come out of each other. Or another option you could do, if you've got lots of cartons knocking about, you have to find two of each carton and then you can do the Russian dolls that open up where you have one inside another as opposed to under another and then you open it up and you find it. But you'll need to find quite a few cartons to do that type and they need to be the same uh, so that they can open up and they need to fit each other inside as well. Then the principle of making both types of Russian doll is the same because we're just doing the same thing to decorate them. So I'm going to talk you through the decoration and then I can show you afterwards both types of doll and how they look. So what you need to get your hands on is felt pens. You're going to need paper and we're going to um, make the head and the bodies uh, with paper and felt pens to decorate. And that's after we've covered all of our pots or painted them or colored them 
so that they're red. So I've got some red tissue paper here, which I could stick on a pot or a bit of red material because it's a peasant's dress anyway. Um, this pot, for instance, is red already. Um, this would be easy maybe to colour in with paint or even a red marker pen all the way around. Um, think up different ways to make all of your pots red. Okay, so let me talk you through some of my red tubs. This one's been covered with tissue paper. I've painted that one in red. That's my little cork um, that has been painted in red, or you could felt pen it if you're using a cork. Here is another yogurt pot um, that I've covered in tissue. Those are the egg, the little egg containers, which I felt penned in, and those were red anyway. Um, so just find ingenious ways. Oops, there's one hiding under there in my nesting dolls um yeah so just find ways to get all of your little stacking dolls red and then the fun part is coming up now we're gonna get some paper and then we also need some circles to draw around and they'll need to be circles of differing sizes um because they're going to be the faces of your pots so for instance that looks like the right size for this doll here. So you're gonna cut out circles for each doll uh, that are decreasing in size to correspond to the containers you have. So I've cut lots of different circles that all correspond to my different dolls. And now it's time to decorate them. And there's a very particular way that Russian dolls look. Um, they often have a headscarf and they'll often have like roses on their body, um, on their dress so for each circle you could also cut a sort of oblong shape like this which is going to be their body and then you need to get decorating and I'm going to show you some examples after I've done it so you can see I've drawn my first little doll's head here and actually her eyes are a bit wonky never mind um she's got eyelashes and rosy cheeks. Russian dolls always have rosy cheeks and bright red lips and dark hair. And I've done two little yellow bits um, for bits from her headscarf. But you could do whatever you wanted for your Russian doll's face. Um, and red and yellow are good colours to use because Russian dolls often come in yellow and red. So here we go. I've stuck my head on my doll and now here's the body. Now for the body, often... There are pictures of roses and leaves and flowers um, on the Russian doll's dresses. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I can show you this is her body and I've drawn a little rose. So at the side, I've put two arms. She's got pink sleeves and at the bottom, there's some frills and I'm going to stick that on. And uh, you can see I've done some other little blue flowers around the edges. Uh, green leaves around my rose. They always have a bow sort of at their neck and um, yeah, the frills for their little peasant dresses. So I'm going to stick that on and then next I just need to replicate all these faces and all these bodies for my other dolls. So here to show you I have finished drawing all my little dolls and as you can see I've replicated the head and body each time um, but just smaller and smaller so each time a bit of detail might get lost you'll see the blue flowers are diminishing you'll notice that the little blue flowers diminish each time we get smaller because it gets harder to put the detail in and then at the very end we've got the cork which doesn't need to be hollow it can be solid but of course you can um go even smaller and smaller. And here I've made my opening Russian dolls with the head and the body on the different parts. So you open it inside and then there's a smaller one, which is my egg pot doll that I made out of the eggs. Then I open her up and then inside is my little cork doll. And don't forget, you can um, do as many as you want. I've just done three for demonstration. You could do loads. So there we go. Those are our Russian dolls. Hope you enjoyed the video and please subscribe if so and spread the word.